The Biden administration's response to the situation at the Ukrainian border has caused a rift in Washington. Several lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are backing sanctions against Russia and aid for Ukraine's military. But some more isolationist members of the GOP are questioning why the U.S. would support Ukraine at all. Florida Senator Rick Scott sits on the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. He's also the chair of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, and he's with us to discuss the situation in Ukraine and the upcoming midterm elections. Senator Scott, thanks for being here. You support providing military aid, but you've also said that you want Ukraine to defend itself. Nonetheless, you've criticized President Biden for saying that he won't send troops to Ukraine. So, Senator, if Russia launches a full-scale invasion into Kyiv and the U.S. is asked to provide forces by President Zelensky or any of our NATO allies, how would you respond? Well, first of all, what we ought to be doing right now is we ought to stop Nord Stream 2. Uh, right now, we ought to be very clear with the sanctions that are going to go on uh, uh, in Russia uh, that will have a devastating impact on their economy. Uh, unfortunately, I think the reason why Putin is doing what he's doing is because of the botched withdrawal in Afghanistan. Now, what I think we ought to be very clear is we're going to do everything we can to help Ukraine. I don't think we should t tell anybody what we will do with regard to the use of American forces anywhere in the world. Uh, we should always make it clear that we have the most lethal military in the world and we'll use it when we want to use it, but we don't need to tell anybody when we're going to use it. In the meantime, we ought to do everything we can to provide whatever aid we can so Ukraine uh, and the military, the Ukrainian citizens and their military can defend themselves. So, and I hope, uh, you know, Biden said he was this world leader. He has all these relationships. He needs to get everybody to work together uh, to make sure that whether it's providing support for Ukraine or sanctions against Russia, they all happen. So, Senator, just to be clear, uh, is it your sentiment that uh, when it comes to Ukraine, at least there is bipartisan support for what President Biden is doing, how he's engaging uh, with our allies in Europe, but also with Vladimir Putin. To your point, he has vowed that if Putin invades Ukraine, he will end Nord Stream 2. Well, the, the first thing is, unfortunately, the Democrats blocked, um, you know, stopping the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. I don't know why they did that. I think it, it was in basically pure appeasement by uh, Biden for Putin when, when Biden first came in. Uh, we had a vote on that, and unfortunately, the Democrats blocked it. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, members of the Senate that are clear we've got to stop uh, Nord Stream 2, but we also have to do sanctions, but we have to do them now. Uh, don't wait until after thousands and thousands and thousands of Ukrainians die. Why would we do that? Let's be very clear what we're doing now. Um, and unfortunately, the Democrats have not been able to help put something together to get that done. All right, Senator, let's talk about uh, the Republicans uh, and the midterm elections. Do you support, do you plan to support Senator Mitch McConnell as GOP leader after the election should the Republicans win control of the Senate? Well, I think I have a very good working relationship with uh, Leader McConnell. There will be an election for the leader uh, in uh, November uh, after the election. I'll be surprised if he doesn't continue to be the leader. I'm going to continue to do my job as representing my state um, and whoever the leader is. Uh, but right now, I, would, I, I can't imagine there will be a leader besides Mitch McConnell. We'll take the majority back uh, in November. I think we're going to have a great November. Uh, and uh, the leader will, uh, the, Mitch McConnell will be the leader of the, of the Senate at that time. And you'll vote for him, Senator? Absolutely. Yeah, I have a very good working relationship with, uh, with the leader. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm going to keep fighting for, I'm going to keep fighting for my state. We're going to have a big win in November. The Biden agenda has crumbled. His support has crumbled. Uh, we are in, we're ahead in uh, Georgia. We're already ahead in Nevada. Uh, we have a big opportunity in New Hampshire. We have a big opportunity to pick up uh, Arizona. Uh, I want to ask you about, uh, as you're, as, Senator, as you're listing states, I want to ask you about Alaska. Uh, it's very interesting, given the nonpartisan primary that's being held there in August, with ranked choice voting in November. Incumbent GOP Senator Lisa Murkowski will face a Trump-endorsed Republican challenger. Tell us what resources the NRSC plans to commit to help Murkowski in this race. Sure. Uh, the National Republican Senator Committee is a, in the bylaws, we support our incumbents. Uh, I don't think Lisa Murkowski is going to need any support. Uh, she is out there hard, working hard, raising money, uh, but that she has a race, and we'll see who, who wins that race. But right now, Lisa Murkowski is raising her money. I think what we'll end up spending our money to do is to pick up our money will be most spent pick up uh, the seats in Georgia, in Arizona, Nevada, New Hampshire. Uh, there'll be some other states I think we can pick up. 
Uh, we have great candidates across the country, and I think we're going to have a great uh, year. We're going to take our resources and, and play offense all across the country. Uh, Senator, let me ask you about uh, your colleague uh, in the House of Representatives, Adam Kinzinger, who said earlier this week that it's important for other congressional Republicans to go on the record about how they view the events of January 6, 2021. Uh, do you feel, you, Senator, that the actions taken on that day at the Capitol were, quote, legitimate political discourse? I think it's wrong that people bring, broke into the Capitol. Those individuals need to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, just like anybody that, that breaks into uh, uh, property, federal property, state property, they all need to be prosecuted to this full extent of the law. Uh, I don't believe that Nancy Pelosi did the right thing uh, and set up a committee uh, that the minority leader didn't get picked, the members. Uh, and also, I think we ought to now really do an investigation of what happened with the Clinton campaign. We saw what Durham put out, that uh, they clearly spied on the former president. They spied and then they lied about it. I think there ought to be a thorough investigation exactly what the Clinton campaign was doing. And uh, members like Adam Schiff and Jerry Nadler, who completely lied about the Russian collusion, they need to be investigated. So, Senator, you say that you support them being prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Does this mean that you do not support pardons, as former President Trump has indicated? Sure. I, uh, I was governor of Florida for eight years. There's a clemency process in the state. I went through that process. I had about... Oh, about 80 to 100 clemency cases uh, every 90 days. I think, you know, like, it, like everything else, and if you can go through that process, but right now people need to be uh, prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Sure, so you're, you're not saying you're taking away their constitutional rights or the way our system works, but are you saying that you do not support pardons when you're saying these people need to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law? I'm saying let's follow the law. They broke the law. They need to be prosecuted. Okay. Whoever the president is has the opportunity to look at clemency and make a decision if they want to do that or not. Uh, and let me finally ask you, Senator, about the move to censure uh, Representative Kinzinger and Representative Cheney. Did you support that? Well, first off, I completely support Ronald McDaniels as a chair of the Republican National Committee. She's done a great job. That's why we're going to have a, one of the reasons why we're going to have a great uh, November. Uh, I don't believe we ought to be telling uh, the members of the Republican National Committee uh, how to act. I don't believe uh, that that you know members Republicans should have gone on a committee that uh, that weren't picked by uh, the minority leader. That's not the typically the way uh, these committees are, are set up, and I don't think that's what they should have done. So, so you support the censure? I said I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to second guess what uh, the members of the Republican National Committee want to do. That's a decision they get to make, and they don't need anybody's advice. I don't. Uh, I don't believe Republicans should have gone on a committee that Nancy Pelosi didn't follow the rules to set up. I think it's just. I mean, it's, I think it's just a, a committee to just go attack uh, uh, Republicans, and I don't think that's what should have happened. But you know, the Republican National Committee gets to make decisions. So, so, Senator, you feel that the uh, January 6th committee is set up, was set up to attack Republicans and not to investigate the events and the circumstances surrounding that day? Absolutely. I mean, if you, would, if you wanted to have a real investigation, you would have the Democrat members picked by Nancy Pelosi, the Republican members picked by Kevin McCarthy. That's not what happened. That's how committees are set up in Congress. That's not what happened. So it's just a, it's just a way for Nancy Pelosi to attack Republicans. But, 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 Senator, I understand that that's, that's how you feel, but you have two Republicans no, 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 no. sitting it's not on how you I have, feel. But you have two Republicans it's how it's sitting done. on the it's committee. Not, no, no, let's go back. It's not how I feel. That's how committees are set up. That's how our committees are set up in the House. That's how committees are set up in the Senate. Nancy Pelosi made a choice not to follow uh, the normal process where the minority leader picks the members and, and, uh, and Nancy Pelosi picks members. But, but my, my point, Senator, is that there are two Republicans sitting on that committee. They may not have gone through the process as you outlined, but there are two Republicans on that committee. They're not Democrats. They didn't. So Nancy Pelosi didn't follow the rules, okay? Why didn't she follow the rules? Because she wants to use it to attack Republicans. That's why she used it. It's real simple. All right, Senator Rick Scott, we appreciate your time as always, sir. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Have a good day. You too.